Welcome back and thanks for being with Morning Live. Now, the National Department of Health says that there's been an exponential rise in the number of infections uh, caused by the new variant of the COVID-19 virus. The variant, uh, which has been discovered from samples by the National Institute of Communicable Diseases, is also found in neighboring Botswana as well as Hong Kong. Now, in a media briefing held by the department yesterday, scientists said that they are expecting a rapid increase in the virus, uh, which is driving a spike in infections. Now, of the 1,200 positive cases that were recorded by Wednesday this week, 80% of those were mainly in Tswane in Gauteng, and experts are still generating data uh, from other provinces. And we are now joined by Professor Tulio de Oliveira, who is the director of the KwaZulu Natal Research and Innovation Sequencing uh, Platform, CRISP. Uh, Prof, good to have you back with us here on Morning Live. Welcome. Uh, good morning and, and good morning to all your viewers. Yeah. So, Prof, let's start by taking a look at what we know about this new variant and what are its characteristics. Okay, so what we know about this new variant, we know that it, it has been detected and is transmitted at great speed in, in Hauteng, yeah. Uh, both in, in all the different um, districts and sub-districts and, and big seats in Hauteng, yeah. And we were even shocked to see the, the number of infections how uh, from yesterday, from the day before the increase, yeah. We also know that this, this variant has uh, many different mutations on the spike protein. That's, that's where we, we worry as scientists, yeah. And we also know that this variant is quite easy to, to detect, this means to identify, because one of the qPCR uh, tests that, that is used yeah, commonly can discriminate this, this variant from the previous ones. So just for lay folk, in terms of what you may experience as a result of uh, contracting this new variant, uh, how will it differ if any significant way at all? So at the moment, we, we, we don't know what is, would be the, the, the difference in symptoms, yeah, because this, this, this uh, discovery is very recently and um, at the moment, like the infections are just starting to grow. But what we know from all the other variants that, that came to South Africa is that the, the disease symptoms were quite similar. Yeah. And our biggest hope it is that this variant develop much less uh, disease severity. Yeah. And, and that's what we're going to have to be looking very, very quick and very, very carefully, especially on the rate of hospitalizations. Prof, any indication as to the origins of this new variant? Uh, you know, how would you explain again to us lay folk in terms of uh, how, where it originated, the mutations, etc.? Okay, it is it is very difficult or sometimes impossible to find the the origin of of variants or of virus. So, for example, could easily have come from anywhere else in the world. And imagine uh, Johannesburg and Hauteng, it is um, our biggest airport in South Africa. Yeah, so it could have uh, emerged anywhere in the world. Yeah, but what we know is that went to an amplification event. Yeah, what it means, an uh, amplification event, it means once one have like outbreaks. Yeah, and that's why we have to be very careful as a nation uh, to try to avoid uh, big gatherings in the next few weeks and super spreading events especially as schools and universities break for the end of the year and that come with, with, with time to, to celebrate. But we have to be very careful that we don't amplify over uh, again this variant or other variants. Yeah. Uh, Prof, how do you address the scepticism around this, where people will say uh, we had an election and in the run-up to that election uh, there were rallies and uh, super spreader events that people noted, spoke to, and basically said, well, wait for it. After the elections, we will be told about the spike in numbers, the fourth wave, and 
everything that is happening that we are seeing play out right now. And just looking at some of the comments coming through in response to our question of the day as to whether people are concerned about this new variant, uh, there's a lot of scepticism uh, around what is happening right now. So how do you address that question as a scientist uh, in responding to people who are saying that we are being managed around this pandemic and the spikes and uh, the increases in the waves as we go along. Okay, so 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 the first thing, yeah, um, the um, a lot of the scientists were predicting a, a fourth wave uh, around this year and in the end of the year, and that's just the the duration between waves. They have been relatively constant yeah and that was before even they have decided to 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 go with the election or not yeah uh, of course the democracy is very important yeah and and so and we are in a democratic state so elections and selection of who who run the, the metros is important yeah but uh, the the kind of prediction of the time between the waves it came much before the the elections and to be honest uh, we 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 are not really expecting uh, a new variant what we were expecting and all the modeling were were saying and the results is that given the the, the previous high wave of infections uh, we were expecting a much milder yeah fourth wave and and i really hope that 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 still happen yeah so prof geographically we see now the highest numbers in Tswane in Gauteng. Um, is it possible to trace and explain the breakout in this particular area? So we, what what we know normally how um, waves of infections happen, not only in South Africa around the world. Yeah, it's normally start in the younger uh, population, younger ad- adults or, or old teenagers, and the reason for that is quite simple. They are just they are just uh, is the time that you are sociable in your life yeah and you you like to be uh, out and about you are in schools or universities with a lot of people yeah and that have been seen around the whole world yeah that normally it emerge in the younger adult population and then start moving up to the older uh, age groups and that's where the the really disease happens yeah Mm. So, so if we look back, um, we were told that uh, the beta variant was the one that drove the second wave, Delta drove the third wave, and uh, said to be at the time deadlier than the ones before. Uh, what can we say about this uh, new variant? And, you know, again, should we be concerned? So, yeah, yeah, we should, we should be concerned, yeah. And but I think that we're going to have to follow the numbers very carefully. But more important, yeah, yeah, try to avoid super spreading events. Uh, the the mask use is still very effective. Yeah, it reduces transmission by close to fifty percent. So I really would bleach people to 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 still use some m- mask when you see someone. Yeah. And, and and then prepare the, the, the hospitals in case the surge of hospitalized um, people um, uh, happens. Yeah, of course, that for me as a scientist is very risk to, to raise the alarm. We prove we can re- easily be proven to be to be wrong. But at the moment, it would be my biggest dream yeah, to be proved to be wrong and that we, we do not end up with a big wave of infection in the end of the year because we, we, we are all tired and exhausted, including uh, our scientific teams. Yeah. So, so, Prof, from uh, what we were told thus far, uh, according to the reports, uh, this variant um, doesn't only transfer faster, possibly, uh, but it may also attack some parts of the immune system with unusually high mutations. So can you explain that to us and also what is driving this spike? Okay, so so what what the scientists do? They look at um, mutations at the protein. Yeah, how it means basic the the proteins have a function. In the case of SARS-CoV-2, the most important protein they spike. It will bind to the human receptor to cause infection, 
And sometimes these mutations, they change a little bit how the protein binds and can bind quicker, so it can cause more infection. And it is uh, our immune system will also be attacked, this protein. Yeah. So what it's going to try to do, uh, virus and bacteria is common. Uh, for example, HIV developed resistance to treatment and TB also. So what they will do, they will mutate to be less attacked by the immune systems or, or therapies. Yeah. At the moment, we, we have signs that there is some of that mutations, yeah, but we, we, we do not have the exactly information because it will take a couple of weeks to develop of really what will be the effect. And that's why a lot of scientists, not only in South Africa, but around the world, this afternoon, we are having a meeting with the head of the National Institute of Health of the United States yes, to try to see how many scientific groups around the world and in South Africa can try to answer that question as soon as possible. So brings us again also to the issue of vaccination and uh, government still concerned that uh, the vaccination drives are still reaching well below the numbers that government would uh, like to vaccinate at this point. But does vaccination have the ability to neutralize or, or to curb the spread of this variant and possibly others? Okay, so 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 the the vaccination is the, is the most strong. Uh, the vaccines are the most strong weapon in our arsenal to fight that virus. Yeah, and 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 my big suggestion is really to people try to to get vaccinated as soon as possible, especially before a fourth wave potentially start. Yeah, I myself I, I had a booster of the Johnson Johnson a, a, a week ago because we are part of the Sisong program for people that uh, work with virus and healthcare workers, yeah, because that, that, that's current our best uh, weapon in that arsenal, yeah. And what we, we are doing is really detect to see if this variant would decrease the effectiveness of the, of the vaccines, but we still hope and we still expect the, the vaccines to still hold against uh, hospitalization and deaths. Mm. And, um, of course, uh, that's the other thing, the booster shots, uh, Prof. Uh, many people concerned about that as well. Is, is that now going to be a way of life? And does it have anything specifically uh, to do with these mutations? Or is this just something we're going to make peace with, that we're going to have booster shots ever so often? We, yeah, I personally hope not. I'm not a, a big fan of syringes, yeah, and uh, because I get a sore arm for a couple of days after that, yeah. And, and, and we really hope that's not the case, yeah. Uh, and that's why it is so important to try to, to really increase vaccination so we can get some kind of population immunity, yeah, and see if it is this virus, which unfortunately seems very persistent, uh, can, can, can stop circulating. Yeah. Mm. And then, of course, um, it, it was said in the briefing yesterday that uh, the public may need to avoid gatherings to avoid uh, cluster outbreaks. Prof, uh, does that mean that we are likely to go into another higher level lockdown at this stage? So, uh, yeah, again, I, I hope not. I, I'm really um, not a big supporter of, us, of lockdowns. That's the when we basically lose every single uh, public health to control the virus. Yeah. And then that's only the last resort. And lockdowns also cause unnecessarily uh, financial uh, damage to the population. So at the moment, uh, I really would really just plea for the public to try to be more more caution with, with, with gatherings and super spreading events. Yeah. None of us, neither scientists or, or government or public health officials, are fan of lockdowns. And it's only when when there is no resource to 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 protect the the hospital. So at the moment, would be people to be very careful to use the mask to get social distance. If you develop any kind of symptoms, isolate from other before you get tested. And anyone that get tested positive, please isolate because we we we, we really need uh, to to control. We don't want a fourth wave. We want really um, a happy Christmas this year. Yeah. Mm. I think that's what everybody's looking forward to. Professor Tulio de Oliveira, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Professor de Oliveira is Director of KwaZulu-Natal Research and Innovation Sequencing Platform, CRISP, and discussing with us the new uh, COVID-19 variant, among other things.